welcome back to my channel so today's topic is hand foot and mouth disease so this is a disease which is commonly seen in young children so below the age of 5 so this can be really very painful to the kids so let me give you more details about this today so hand foot mouth disease this is a contagious disease which is caused by viral infection so basically here it is caused by a enterovirus and uh, the specific strains of that are enterovirus 71 and uh, coxsack c virus 16 okay so these are the common ones common enterovirus which leads to this particular disease so basically what happens here is it affects various parts of the body of the kid and basically it is your hand foot and mouth so that is why the name hand foot and mouth disease is given to this particular disease so there is no specific treatment for this disease but this can be really very painful but it is not very serious okay so it will uh, go by itself for within some days but this 10 days or 7 to 10 days can be really very painful to the kid so you can see there will be a lot of sores in the mouth and uh, there will be rashes on the hands and foot so this is a basic characterization by which you can identify it so by physical examinations doctors can tell if the kid is suffering from hand foot and mouth disease so this usually becomes more in summer season because virus replicates faster in summer seasons because of which this can become more and more the cases can increase in this summer season. So coming to the symptoms of this disease. So basically uh, the kid will have fever. Apart from that it can have even sore throat because of the blisters that is happening in the mouth. It starts feeling unwell. It is not able to eat properly because of the sores in the mouth, hands, legs and all. So it, it might lose appetite because of that. And because of that, definitely because of the pain that the kid is going through, it will have a lot of crankiness. It will lead to fatigue condition and painful blisters are the main characterization or the main characteristic features of this particular disease. So coming to the disease transmission, we know that the virus can transmit through various routes. One important route by which it can transmit is by coughing or sneezing. So same like in the case of COVID by coughing, sneezing, we can spread the virus. Same thing even happens here because this is also caused by a virus. So close contact with the person who is infected, like kissing the baby, hugging the baby, sharing the cups with the baby, using the same utensils can lead to transmission of this disease. Not only that, from the saliva also, the kid can transmit that virus. So you know that uh, the kids will be drooping so that saliva also might contain the virus so disinfecting the areas will be very very important here apart from that wherever the, the blisters are formed on the skin of the baby fluids which are present inside these blisters also might have the virus not only that even the poop of the baby so when you're changing the diapers by mistake if you touch it and you do not wash your hands properly even you can get infected with this particular virus so since though it is commonly seen in kids even elders can have this infection so it is most commonly seen in kids because as we know kids will touch each and every place and they will put their hands in the mouth so that is the main reason they get infected very easily plus their immune system is not very strong they are still in the initial stages so that is why the chances of this disease is more seen in children. So coming to the complications of this dehydration can happen because the kid is not able to eat properly because of the pain that it is going through so that can lead to a lot of dehydration so there some help might be required apart from that complications are really very rare in this condition but sometimes you can have complications like uh, meningitis so that can happen that is swelling of the membranes of the brain and spinal cord and swelling of the heart muscles that is myocarditis so in this way if this happens this is going to be really detrimental because it can even lead to paralysis so this is the complicated situation of this particular disease but these complications are very very rare so coming to the diagnostic options, so as I told you, doctor might do a physical examination to check the blisters and identify if it is a hand, foot, mouth disease. Apart from that, a swab can be taken from the various areas which is infected like the throat, hand, legs, wherever the blisters are there. So sampling can be done from those samples and then lab testing can be done. So basically we know we can do the PCR and uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, techniques which are available for identification. So definitely the samples will be sent to a virology lab. So we can send it to NIV Pune also. And there you can do the PCR analysis to check if it is enterovirus species which has infected the child. 
So once that is done, you can even do the sequencing. And once you do the sequencing of that, you can uh, use certain bioinformatics tool like BLAST. And once you do that, you can compare it with the uh, certain sequences which are already there in the repositories. Okay, so the sequences are available for uh, definite organism. So this will be the sequence. So in that way, a gen bank will have its uh, sequences which is deposited. So you can compare your results with that result and then confirm if it is a same species which has caused the infection. So this is this confirmation which can be done by verification with GenBank and then using bioinformatics tool to identify it. That is called as the phylogenetic tree analysis. So this is just to show you the sampling how it can be done. So this is the sampling which is trying to take from the uh, mouth region. So this is the PCR machine where you can do the amplification of RNA. And these are the samples which are th they have got. And this is one sampling which they are trying to do from the poop sample. So here you can see the different samples which they have taken. This is a study which they was conducted with various patient samples. So vesicle swab, throat swab, rectal swab, ulcer swab. So based on the requirement, whichever swab is uh, uh, necessary can be taken and that can be sent for analysis. So this is just to show you the number of years and uh, fatality risk uh, in uh, various cases okay so as you can see it can happen in any age even after 14 even more than that it can uh, happen but more cases you can see it is below the age of 5 okay and most of the cases are caused by enterovirus 71 so this is the common one which is causing this hand foot and mouth disease so this is just to show you a phylogenetic tree so once you do the blast and do the phylogenetic tree analysis so you will get some results like this. So in this particular case, you can just see it is comparing it and it has been showing here that it is almost similar to human coccyx virus A16. So that is one of the species that causes this infection. So once you do this, you can identify that. Imagine you have taken a vesicle sample and by doing this blast, you have got this result. So finally, you can confirm that the person who has been uh, whose sample has been taken from the vesicle, he is suffering from this hand, foot and mouth disease and the virus that has caused this disease is Cocaxi virus A16, that is this species. So in this way, these kind of phylogenetic tree analysis will, well, will be very helpful in identifying which particular strain has caused the infection. So coming to the prevention of this disease, definitely good hygienic practices are very, very important. So washing the hands regularly, seeing to it that your child does not uh, touch all places and then start putting your hand in mouth. So that is one important thing which might be difficult but definitely this will have to be done so that these kind of infections can be prevented. And always you should teach the kid how to uh, cough or sneeze uh, when people are there around if they, if they have been infected by these kind of uh, diseases. So uh, closing your mouth or nose will uh, properly so that you do not spread it to the next person will be important. Disinfection is the most important thing here. So uh, the areas where this child is there, you can try to clean it frequently and you should definitely not kiss or hug your child when it's suffering from these kind of infections. You should not share the uh, utensils or cups as I told you and definitely you should not send the kid to the school. So it might take 7 to 10 days for the kids to recover. So at this time definitely you should not send them to school because if you send them to school, there is a chance that it, they can transmit this to the other kids in the school. So this can be contagious, so you have to take very much care. So coming to the treatment options, as such there is no vaccine available as of date. And we know that uh, usually when kids fall sick, they give us antibiotics. But in this case, antibiotics is not going to help because antibiotics are usually used for bacterial infections. And in this case, it is a viral infection. So for viral infections, we cannot give antibiotics. So that is why this will be uh, one thing which you need to uh, take into consideration and it will go by itself by 7 to 10 days but this 7 to 10 days will be really very painful to the kid. So there are certain over the counter uh, pain relievers which are available. So this but you have to take only with the consultation with your pediatrician and even certain anti -itch, uh, itch lotions are available, calamine types. So there also uh, you have to consult your pediatricians and then only if they recommend you can give those kind of uh, uh, itch, uh, anti -itch, itch lotions and coming to uh, certain types you can give them certain uh, yogurts, smoothies or ice pops. So that will help in uh, some relief to the blisters but you should not give them any kind of sodas okay like uh, this kind of sodas because they have these sodas will have acids 
and that can be more irritating to the source. So these are the few precautions you need to take. So coming to the uh, takeaway messages, we have seen how this hand, foot and mouth disease can spread and why it is commonly seen in children and why it is spreading mostly in the summer seasons. So as of now, there are no much uh, uh, relief available for this particular uh, disease in the, uh, type of, in the type of vaccines that are there. So definitely this is contagious disease and even it can spread through uh, swimming pools okay so there also if uh, a kid is infected and it uses the swimming pool and same swimming pool is used by some other person there also the person can get infected so there are various reasons or various ways by which one can get infected by this particular disease so disinfecting common areas teaching good hygienic practices and isolating the kid which is uh, suffering from this disease so that it does not spread it to the next person is very very important here so recent updates like uh, uh, Food and Drug Administration is uh, of China basically here is uh, they have approved one uh, vaccine for hand, foot and mouth disease last year. So still it has been uh, in the evaluation stage where they are trying to check the effectiveness of this against various strains. So I told you some strains today. So they are checking for all these strains and checking if that vaccine has got efficacy towards all the strains. Okay, so in this way uh, research has been going on in this area. And definitely if these kind of vaccines are coming up, then we can get some relief from this particular disease. So stay vigilant, stay safe. So thank you for watching. Do like the video, subscribe to my channel and please share this video with maximum people so that I can make much more educational videos for you like this. Thank you.